Hello, Simply Support. It is me, Catherine. I am here to answer the question of does the way that we care about our resources, how we care about our resources, impact how we care about ourselves? And I believe this is a very important question to ask because this is something that I believe is regularly overlooked in the human experience. This concept of I buy resources and then I turn them into trash and then it's someone else's responsibility uh, to dispose of it and take care of it and move it. You know, this plastic world that we live in, right? Of everything comes in a package and then how do you deal with the package? Where does it go? And this concept of resources about sustainability inspired something in me that I could not explain. It happened to me while I was in college. So I went to university to be a teacher and it didn't really work out. <laughs> I was in it for a year and a half and I was getting into classrooms and I was like, hmm, this whole concept of being inside every single day and not having the freedom to go outside at my own means seems a bit not like I want to sign up for the rest of my life with. I love teaching and that's why maybe I'm in this space and, you know, I'll maybe teach more moving forward. I'm not sure. But I moved, transitioned into being a wildlife major. I wanted to be outdoors. This concept of being an outdoors woman in the forest just really fascinated me. And I, a lot of my classes were outside, so I was like, ah, sick. So without transitioning into this wildlife major, following this internal feeling, if I want to be outside, I feel best when I'm outside. It, it all felt so random at the time. I don't even know where I came from. I don't know, understand how I felt guided in that direction, but I was. And when I ended up there, I was buzzing about it. I loved it. I felt it transforming me internally because I was outside. I was interacting with the forest and I was learning every single detail about the Midwest and the world, how the world works and, you know, identifying species. And like, I know most of the tree species in Indiana because I love trees, <laughs> did well in that class. But t towards the end of my studies, I was introduced to the sustainability course and we talked about resources and made plans about how to be more sustainable with every resource in your life. And through that class, I was, and through wildlife, it was always about how the world's going to end because of climate change and how all of these species are dying and we're going to die. And everything was really heavy. It felt very heavy when this message was being conveyed to me to the point where I would just cry. It, it, it honestly put me in a depression where I felt so doomsday about the world and about existence and the human life and troubled about the direction that we were heading in that I just sat in my apartment by myself and cried. When we had to give a reaction video to a climate change documentary, I was just crying on the camera to them about how sad I was about it. And I was like, these people probably think I'm absolutely bonkers, but I couldn't hold my emotion towards it. And this feeling, this sadness that I felt about what I had done to the world and what every other human was doing to the world, it felt so visceral. I can't even understand why it did, but I'm having to believe because I am a creature of this earth. And suddenly I was well aware of it and the feeling of the earth's pain and my pain were merging and it was just this beautiful moment where I was like, I'm going to care about this. And at first, the feelings about the earth were very doom and gloom, and I was scared. And from that place, I wasn't very active. I was more just depressed, depressed and mourning. And so to move into a state of productivity required a shake of such. Uh, a really strong visceral shake from 
the earth telling me, no, that's not the path you're going on. You're going on this path, basically. And the best way I can describe it is that I was being an alcoholic and following alcoholic tendencies and I got in trouble with the law and once that happened they were like I I had to change my life I there I had no other point had choice at that point you know at that if you're getting in trouble in with the law for your alcoholic tendencies then <laughs> you got to change so I did and the way that this looked was me sitting in my apartment crying obviously because of the things that I've gone through and still feeling this morning for the earth but I started to research about how I could transition into this sustainability life and how to maybe even have my own business with it because I obviously held a lot of passion for sustainability efforts and I wanted to help other people be more aware and conscious of their resources, of their trash, and the things that they do in their day-to-day life, Why they, where they buy their things, how they buy their things. I wanted to be a pillar point advocate for that revolution. And when I figured that out, I found this zero waste concept, this, oh, well, you don't actually have to create waste, or you can minimize your waste to the smallest amount. And I was inspired by Lauren Singer, who runs the PackageFreeShop.com. She was the first person that introduced me to this through her content. And she could fit a year's worth of trash in a jar because everything else she did was bulk ordering or recycling or composting. She had figured out a life for herself in New York that allowed her to create basically no trash at all. And I found this absolutely fascinating. And when I started to dive into it in 2017, I wanted to share my journey with others because I was like, okay, well, maybe I don't know how to start a business right now in sustainability because all I did want to do was run my own bulk shop. I spent hours looking at how to start a bulk shop because I was like, I can't be in the restaurant industry anymore. I can't be surrounded by alcohol. I need to get out. I need to do something. But in my pursuits of learning, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to share what I learned. And what I started to learn was what was best for the planet was best for me. I was noticing, oh, well, cloths are better for the planet. And instead of like all all these paper products and organic cotton cloths on my face and my body is obviously better. And especially washed with all natural ingredients instead of all these really heavy fragranced and I don't even know goop that they sell at the store. I don't, I mean, there's natural goop out there to wash your clothes as well. Um, But I'm just going to share you with you now my Instagram to that. I started this, my Instagram as a zero waste page. It was called the anxious granny. And I allude to this in the how to overcome anxiety video in the same playlist of what we do here and simply support and with it I can tell you my story basically so let me just share this with you how do I here we are so I'm pretty sure this is showing so like I said the first thing I was inspired by was not using paper towels anymore so I invested in all of these cloths And then I got really excited about the fact that I could hang them up in my bathroom instead of bringing them to the dryer. See, I officially ran out of paper towels, replacing them with organic cloth. So I probably bought bulk paper towels and then um, it was finally done with it. And then this was really exciting to me because these were the first uh, deodorant that I bought in a glass container and a chopstick that I bought in cardboard and a reusable conditioner. And I just kind of was flowing with this feeling of, oh my gosh, I don't have to do life the way that I used to do it. I can do it in this whole new way for the planet. And in doing so, I'm being connected with all of these 
these natural resources that are actually good for me and good for to put on my body because I don't know if anyone's still using traditional deodorant I'm I I'm just saying it it's not maybe the best thing for you I use a salt stick now I don't use um, the deodorant that was here so I used literally just salt on my armpits and it works wonders so if you're still using traditional deodorant um, it is controversial about what it's doing to your lymph system and I would look into that if you're interested in that because this is what I'm saying is like the resources that we invest in really do change our life and experience and how we perceive the earth like me going out of my way to buy a different type of chopstick and deodorant is me intentionally changing the way that I use my resources and dispose of my resources because like I said this was reusable this was recyclable this was compostable and I just continue to do that with my life so I made this face cream with honey olive oil and no, no coconut oil and whatever and then this one please don't give me advertised coupons or any other junk, junk mail just skip my mailbox less trash equal less ma mail equals less trash I even tried to put this in my mailbox and no one was listening to me but I was like I don't want all of this like why do we get all of these advertisements in the mails why is this a resource that is continuously being printed and it does nothing for anyone and it's harmful to the planet and like I was realizing this I was like well, the less of this junk mail that I have in my life the better I feel and I then I start. Then it was springtime, and I was introduced to the farmer mar farmers market. And when I went to the farmers market, I was putting my produce in bags and jars and paper bags. And then I started to make my own plant milk. And then I found another bulk store. And I was just documenting all of these transitions that I was making in my life in real time because I had gone from to give a little bit more perspective on this because like I said I was going to be a teacher changed to wildlife got into sustainability and now I'm here like obsessed with zero waste lifestyle and caring about what resources I'm using because they're influencing me I was a child that was any normal American child I feel like I was only ate like chicken tenders rice juice didn't drink water very sugary drinks I everything was in plastic and I didn't think about my resources at all my, whatever my mom bought for me is what she bought for me chemicals whatever it was a part of my life like I had never ever ever even considered any of this before this time period before 2018 when I was 22 years old so it's like this is huge for me, and I, I don't know if this is a big deal for you or if you even consider this or you think it's important, but it's how I lived my life and how I still continue to live my life is just as intentionally as possible as this. And um, see, like, this is what I mean. Like, this was my pantry growing up. You had bars of things. You had jars of things, cans, plastic, this or that. And then you look on the bottom shelf – and this is all the things that I got from the bulk store. And uh, it was great because I had access to this. Like, it's easier said than done. Like, when I was living in California, I had access to bulk stores um, more than I do now. And COVID's now changed the entire way that we view germs. And it was an entire step back for sustainability because now everything's about masks and gloves and keeping things clean and sanitary. And so people now I think are even more opposed to bulk which just makes me so sad because I had such a great and uplifting experience going to the bulk stores bringing these jars that I already had around the house filling them with the food that I wanted and moving on for my day like it, it was the be best experience ever for me and you know, this is me making my own soap at home um, this was me making my first uh, laundry detergent at home with uh, cast style soap and baking soda and essential oils um, this was my first compost pile I started in my backyard um, loved that that was my first experiment with that it was really fun this was my first body butter I've ever made um, yeah so I made my first body butter because 
as a woman, I was still shaving. So this was before I went full rogue into the Harry Kate that I am today. But when I would shave as a little girl growing up and I would put on these moisturizers from the store, I my skin would absolutely burn. And I'm like, why is my skin burning putting on a lotion that's supposed to be healing for me? It's like completely opposite of what it is. And ever since this day, so ever since, what day is this? <laughs> 193 of uh, July 31st 2018 ever since that day I've made my own body butter and I still continue to make my own body butter it's in my um I, I have extra even in my fridge I make it in bulk and it's it prepares for the week um I started making my own chips see look this is me using canvas bags still I still use canvas bags um switching to a cup so sorry males but this is a woman thing that is very important getting a menstrual cup and this was me organizing my trash because recently I found that in that California area that you could bring your recycling to a facility like this and they would pay you. So I would bring my cans and my plastics here and they would pay me for it. How sick is that? You know, and that's why Simply Support has a vision for having in a facility like this because look at how many people are lining up for this to bring in their trash because they care and because they're getting like a few dollars worth. But what it is really is an internal feeling, you know, like with these people, every single week I showed up, there was a line of people with barrels and just barrels full of cans and plastics. And I was just, fa I was just so grateful. I was like, wow, all these people care about their resources. And I can tell that it's changing the way that they feel about themselves. And that's something that I'm trying to get home here is that through this process, I was healing. So I told you that this thing, the earth told me that, you know, stop being an alcoholic realistically. And I listened, I was like down for a while, but I picked myself back up and I started caring about the planet. And the more that I started caring about the planet, the more I felt I was taking care of myself and I didn't feel so drawn to needing to drink anymore. It wasn't about that anymore. It was about just living life to the best that I could and to have that feeling anyone who's experienced addiction before is it's just so powerful I bet I guess I just like transitioned my addiction from one to the next realistically but this is a much healthier addiction in my opinion <laughs> but uh, this was me trying to do the jar uh, trash jar so this was um, I don't know how long I this was for I think that was a month uh, on the jar and as you can see I still had birth control at this point and that was something that I was trying to join but there's me that's a 2018 Kate just trying to bring awareness to trash and how it makes me feel and how wondering how it makes other people feel um, something that I'm really passionate about as well is like th this transition to makeup I don't wear makeup anymore but changing the products that you put on your face uh, I was still working for a brewery at this point. Um, this is the real Kate rabbit hole, but this is what my bathroom sink used to look like. I had all these different, you know, th how many people's bathroom under their bathroom sinks look like this, just products that grow up all the time. And I just went through each and every one of them, picking which ones I wanted to continue and which ones I didn't. And I think that we're getting the point here and this is the zero waste content was fun but um artistic and it allowed me to learn a lot about myself um compost but you get the general idea of what's going on here and it's honestly oop, <laughs> something that i'm very passionate about and continue to be very passionate about every single day and that's why in the monday meeting i talked about how me and joshua are taking the next level in terms of processing our resources because that's just what we want for ourselves and the rest of the world because to be honest with you I w went really deep into this zero waste lifestyle and because I was so obsessed with it I had no le leeway with myself and I was a bit of a perfectionist with perfectionist with it and I've had to let go of some things or and I create a bit more trash than I used to but whatever I did now was just temporary and I just really feel that 
what I want to do is if I could process all of my plastics and all of my cardboards and papers and all of my metals, if I could figure out how to do that, that would be the ultimate gold for me. And I'm on the path to doing that step by step. And I know that if I figure it out how to do it, I can help other people figure out how to do it as well. Because, of course, there's companies outside of us that we ship our bins to and that maybe are doing things with it or we can ship it to another company that can take responsibility in organizing and this or that but what if we could do figure out how to do it on a community level because we want to because we know that interacting with our resources does make us feel a different way and I'm not quite sure how any of this was perceived or if it makes any sense but I just know that for a fact that my relationship with nature, my relationship with the earth, my relationship with my resources is, was the pillar point, the first thing that allowed me to get right here on the camera in front of you, a a more healed version than I was before, and able to offer my support and share my heart and be genuine about the process, about what I've gone through. And I hope that you've enjoyed my story. And I don't know hopefully inspired you to think about your resources differently or how you are engaging with the world because I know for a fact that (laughs) viscerally it's different so thank you for watching I'll see you next time much love bye